According to the Department of Homeland Security, ransomware is the fastest growing malware threat, targeting both individuals and organizations. Imagine turning on your computer and finding that all your files have been taken hostage. Hate hackers, ransoms. But what we've seen today is a set of global cyber attacks. Some of the ransom that was paid to hackers was ultimately, can be, and perhaps was used to fund criminal activity. Who are the targets or who were the targets? Ransomware, something that everyone dreads of and actually few of us are really that prepared for. With the tax skyrocketing this year and definitely going to be going further into the future, millions and millions of phishing sites actually popping up each and every month, it should be time that we take a bit of a look into ransomware and what our systems are really prepared for. Hey, what's up guys? CP Motor here back with another video and today we're back with a super serious topic, ransomware. And more importantly, we're looking at ransomware simulator, which sounds a bit more like a game. Now, ransomware simulator, yeah, sounds like just a company trying to cash in on the whole gaming simulator kind of market, but trust me, it's much more serious than like goat simulator or half the 99% simulators that are on Steam at the moment. Point being, today we're going to be taking a look at what I would consider to be, up until now, a pretty decent setup in security versus what we probably should have set up and definitely give you some links to see what your systems are running like when it comes to the world of ransomware. So published by the guys at Know Before, this is actually a tool that allows us to see what might happen if our computers were to become infected with ransomware. Now no, the actual software doesn't bring any ransomware onto your computer, so don't freak out about that, and we'll touch more on that in just a moment. But basically, as the name suggests, it simulates different ransomware and how it all works, so that you can have all your defenses prepared for when it actually hits your system, or hopefully never actually hits your system, but at least you're going to be prepared for it. Now, as I did mention in this video, we're going to be talking about two different scenarios. What I would be considering enough to be good enough protection up until now, and then what we probably should have running uh, after we run these tests. So, for me, good enough protection up until recently has been Windows Defender or something free like Malwarebytes uh, or similar like that, where it gets the job done. Hey, Avast is definitely in there. They scan for viruses when we hit scan, or if we've got like a schedule running, then hey, we got that. And basically, that's what we really just had to worry about when it comes to the world of virus and malware protection. But with ransomware, as we'll find out in just a moment, it may not necessarily be the only thing you need for your system. Now, a lot of modern anti-malware slash antivirus programs are starting to come out with anti-ransomware features, and we'll touch on this a little bit later on in the video, but it's not so much just like the last 10 or so years that I've been running uh, malware bytes, for example, and nothing's really changed these companies are definitely starting to step up. And this is also too supported by other companies like Cronus has actually come out with dedicated uh, anti-ransomware software that you can run on your system. So let's go ahead and start taking a look. I set up a VM as I don't really want to be exposing to my computer anything that uh, isn't so great. I mean, don't get me wrong, ransomware simulator is nothing wrong here, but I want to do a little bit further testing, so maybe we'll just put it inside of a VM here today, but definitely is more than fine to be running on an end user's computers. And we're going to go over to the Know Before website and download the ransomware simulator and install it in our system. Now, uh, it does ask for a business, you can just put like really real computer company, I'm sure they're not going to be impressed with me saying that, but point being, you don't really need a computer business to actually download this stuff, all they want to do is know roughly where you're from so they can send you stuff in the emails that you just unsubscribe from. Anyway, uh, once you do fill out, you get the download and you can install it in your system. Now, the first sign that your computer is extremely vulnerable is if you can actually install this program. Most up-to-date malware and antivirus programs will actually stop this program being installed because it has ransomware in the name. So, uh, if you're able to install this without any pop-ups or anything like that, you're off to a pretty bad start and you've kind of failed test one of however many there actually is, so you may want to keep an eye on it there. Once we've gone ahead and installed it, it's actually a pretty decent interface. We get all our bits and pieces here, and we can basically go ahead and start running the actual software. So, for this video, my installer malware bytes that we are running on this test system did stop me from installing and did say, hey, this might be dangerous, don't install it, and actually killed the installer, but I did just allow it so we could actually get things running in this video. So we'll launch it up today and start the actual running and oh my god, 
We have failed 15 out of 16 scenarios. We're vulnerable. What the hell? We've got malware bytes running. I've been secure for all these years. Why all of a sudden am I so vulnerable to these 16 common types of ransomware and also to the crypto mining software? Well, as the name suggests, it's antivirus and anti-malware, not anti-ransomware, and that's something we do need to take a bit of a look at. Personally though, I've never really thought about it until it was pointed out to me that malware and viruses are good in protection, but what about ransomware? It was a really shock to me personally when I first ran this on my own systems. For me, working in IT, I have all my computers that are looked after by the internal IT department and things are secure and backed up and really I just need to worry about doing my job and not worrying about my computer. So running this on my work computer, hey, perfectly fine, whereas my personal computer, Damn, that was definitely an eye-opener. Now, as I mentioned before, many companies are actually jumping on active type protection, like uh, Sophos is definitely getting heavy into this, and other guys that are still free, like Malwarebytes, are still offering an option. So, if we reinstall Malwarebytes and actually enable the real-time protection, you get like, I think it's 15 days free uh, real-time protection, run them again, boom, we have absolutely no problems, because Malwarebytes includes an anti-ransomware type uh, software to it, so you're pretty much good to go here. However, Acronos and also two other companies are actually dedicating a lot of resources to building out these types of pieces of software. So the question is, well, what should you do? You failed like 16 out of 16, 15 out of 16, however many you failed. What do I need to do to make sure I'm not getting wrecked by ransomware? And the answer is, install an anti-ransomware software. Now there's lots out there and this is not a video that's saying buy this one, not that one and blah, 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 blah. Point being today is to just show you what you're actually going to be running into. Now, full transparency, yes, I am an Acronis certified engineer and I've done like the Acronis training so I know a bit more about their product suite, but there are a lot of other great software out there. I'm just going to be using Acronis for this example because that's what I'm doing. So uh, being an Acronis engineer kind of helps me sort of understand what's going on there. But basically what a lot of these softwares actually do is hook into the Windows operating system or whichever operating system you might be running on and actually keeps in a a cache of the files that you are writing to the system. So let's say you're working on a Word document, you hit save, what it's actually going to do is cache that save file and then commit it to the actual drive. Now, you might be thinking this is kind of pointless, how's this got to do anything with anti-ransomware? Well, actually, when ransomware runs, it will start to encrypt the drive, causing a lot of writes, which the software will cache up and then it will detect, hey, you're doing a ton of encryption and then basically revert back to those cached files. So even ransomware is defeated by this because it's going to start writing, programs are going to start caching, then do their detection algorithms, we won't go too far into that one, but it's going to do its detection algorithms, realize that this is ransomware, pull back from those caches, overwrite those written files, and boom, you don't even know that you've been attacked by ransomware, you might get a little pop-up, or just never have to worry about it, which is a really good thing. Now these softwares aren't stupid, it's not going to cache like a 400 gigabyte file and then fill up your drive. A lot of them are, especially Acronis side, is designed to only take 10% of your drive if available and then only take 10% of that 10% for an individual drive. So let's say you have 100 gigabytes of storage, just to keep things nice and easy. If we were to take a uh, piece of software like the Acronis backup software that has anti-ransomware built in, basically what it's going to do is take a 10 gigabyte slice out of that drive and then limit each file size to a maximum of one gigabyte, giving us the 10% and then our 10% in that 10%. So if you've got massive Adobe files, they're gonna be ignored. And a lot of these software are also too pretty smart in seeing that, hey, Adobe's writing this, it's probably gonna be no problems, this is gonna be signed and it doesn't need to cache that, speeding up your systems. In terms of performance, no, we're not going back to 2003 where you install like an um, antivirus and your computer just goes to to the absolute crapper. This is actually pretty fast and all of them are extremely agile and don't really have any impact on your system at all. Even running on a 2012 MacBook Pro with the Windows booted on it, I had absolutely no difference in performance between off versus on. So there's really no impact and I do enjoy that right here. And you get your data protected and it scales infinitely. So let's say you have 10 terabytes of storage. Well, you're gonna get 10% of that 10 terabytes we're talking some pretty big caches that we can have. Now these surfaces 
are not always free. Yes, a Kronos does have a free version, but the one that does on the fly kind of caching in the more modern and up to date one does cost money. And a lot of these surfaces do cost around that $60 per device per year pricing because you do need teams of people keeping up with the whole uh, cyber criminal kind of thing and making sure things are running smoothly. Now, yes, $60 might be a little bit steep, but a lot of softwares do bundle in other things. For instance, Malwarebytes has obviously the rest of the Malwarebytes suite. So you're paying for the uh, anti-ransomware and also to your antivirus, anti-malware and that kind of stuff. So that brings us to the conclusion of these videos. And chances are you, Yes, you are probably running a system that doesn't have the best anti-ransomware going on. And if a ransomware is to hit your computer, you're probably in a little bit of hot water. Simply going ahead and running a tool like Ransomware Simulator can definitely point out your weaknesses and is a great way just to see what's going on with your system and how good your protection actually is. But the best thing to do in all of this, you don't even have to pay any money is just back up your stuff. Keep backups of them and make sure they're up to date. So if you were to be hit by ransomware and you didn't want to pay for an anti-ransomware software, pull from the backups, boom, you are all good, ready to go once again. But if you want to download this software or check out a Kronos or Malwarebytes or really anything else I talked about, check that description box. It's full of some awesome links down there. And uh, let me know down in that comment sections, how many did your system fail? My personal computer got 15 out of uh, 16. Now it's running at 0 out of 16, but uh, let me know what you got down in that comment section. Guys, thanks all for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.